Although the Spanish colonized Guam and the other Mariana Islands in the 1500s and briefly visit other Micronesian islands, it is not until the 19th century that the more remote archipelagos of Micronesia are completely explored. As is the case in Polynesia, the islands of Micronesia are eventually charted through the combined efforts of official exploring expeditions and the chance discoveries of whalers and other commercial vessels. Along with steel tools and other aspects of Western technology, European and American sailors introduced diseases such as smallpox, which decimate the populations of many Micronesian islands. During the 1850s and 1860s, European traders establish outposts on a number of Micronesian islands, including Yap, Kiribati, and the Marshall Islands, and the first Christian missionaries begin to arrive. In one case, an American sailor, David O'Keefe, who is shipwrecked on Yap in the Caroline Islands in 1871, plays a significant role in perpetuating one Micronesian artistic tradition. Over the next 30 years, in exchange for copra, dried coconut meat, a valuable trade commodity, O'Keefe uses a Chinese junk to assist the Yapese in transporting their enormous stone money discs, which they quarry in the neighboring archipelago of Balao. The largest examples of Yapese stone money, some up to four meters across, are brought to the island during the O'Keefe period. After more than a century of increasing Western contact, in the last two decades of the 1800s, all the islands of Micronesia are brought under European colonial control. In the 1880s, Germany claims the Marshall Islands and Nauru. The Germans also claim the Caroline Islands, including Balao, although their claims are disputed by Spain. In the 1890s, Germany formally purchases the Caroline Islands, Balao, and the northern Mariana Islands from Spain, Britain establishes a protectorate over Kiribati, and the United States assumes authority over Guam following the Spanish-American War. After more than three centuries as the sole colonial power in the region, by 1900 Spain no longer controls any portion of Micronesia. Despite the growing impact of Western culture, Micronesia's traditional art forms continue to flourish and develop throughout the 1800s. The gradual decline of the Saudalur dynasty on Pohnpei in the Caroline Islands leads to the abandonment of the megalithic city of Nan Madol in the 1820s, bringing to a close some six centuries of continuous habitation. However, Micronesia's other architectural traditions, such as the erection of richly carved and painted ceremonial houses in Balao, thrive. Throughout the region, men retain their traditional role as carvers, creating elegantly stylized bowls, canoe ornaments and equipment, and ceremonial vessels, as well as rarer examples of figural sculpture. Women create intricate and colorful loom-woven textiles, as well as an enormous variety of works in plaited fiber, including fans, mats, and bodily ornaments, such as bracelets and headbands. From giant crabs, a colorblind island and the world's longest running humanitarian airlift. The most interesting facts about Micronesia. One, the Federated States of Micronesia is an island nation made up of over 600 islands located in Oceania. Two, the Federated States of Micronesia is often abbreviated to Micronesia or the acronym FSM. Three, however, it is not to be confused with the wider cultural and geographic region of Micronesia, which includes more than 2,000 islands, including the nations of Palau, the Marshall Islands, and Nauru, Kiribati, and of course, the Federated States of Micronesia. 4. It is believed that some islands of Micronesia have been inhabited since before 1000 BCE. 5. The islands were first sighted by Europeans in 1500 by Spanish explorers. 6. Micronesia was colonized by Spain in 1886, who then sold the islands to Germany in 1899. Japan then occupied the islands from 1914 until 1944. 7. Micronesia was a major battleground during the Second World War. In 1944, Operation Hailstone was a massive U.S. Navy air and surface assault in Micronesia conducted as part of the American offensive against Japan. 8. 
In Truk Lagoon in Micronesia, there are over 60 shipwrecks of Japanese warships destroyed by American forces in 1944. 9. In 2004, a Second World War shipwreck resurfaced in Micronesia following a typhoon. The wreck of USS Mississinawa, an American oil tanker sunk in the atoll by a Japanese torpedo in 1944, was disturbed by the storm and began to leak the aviation fuel that it had been transporting. 10. From 1947 to 1986, Micronesia was part of the Trust Territory of the Pacific Islands, TTPI, a United Nations Trust Territory administered by the USA. 11. Micronesia is one of just 22 countries not to have an army. 12. Instead, as a former U.S.-administered territory, the USA provides aid and is responsible for Micronesia's defense. In return, the USA can maintain military bases in Micronesia. 13. Micronesia occupies just a small landmass of 702 sq km, but the country is dispersed across an ocean expanse of nearly 3 million sq km, an area approximately five times the size of France. 14. Micronesia is home to the only ancient city ever built on a coral reef. The country's only UNESCO World Heritage Site of Nan Madol is an ancient city that was constructed in a lagoon between 1200 and 1500. The site consists of at least 100 small artificial islands which hold remains of stone palaces, temples, tombs, and houses. 15. Micronesia is one of the least visited countries in the world. It only receives around 30,000 tourists a year. 16. Micronesia is home to the longest-running humanitarian airlift in the world. Operation Christmas Drop is an annual military training operation that airlifts Christmas gifts and humanitarian aid to Micronesia. It began in 1952 and continues to this day. 17. Micronesia is home to the most colorblind place on Earth. Worldwide, only one in every 30,000 people have acromatopsia, color blindness. But on Pingalap Atoll in Micronesia, one in 10 people are afflicted. 18. Micronesia consists of four island states, Chuk, Truk, Kosrai, Kosaye, Ponpe, Ponape, and Yap. 19. Micronesia's flag is made up of, of white stars representing the four states, centered on a blue background which represents the Pacific Ocean. 20. The tiny Micronesian island of Mogmog is home to the largest terrestrial arthropods, crabs, in the world. The crabs have a leg span of nearly one meter and can crush coconuts with their pincers. 21. Micronesia, like many Pacific Island nations, has one of the fattest populations in the world. In 2017, a report ranked Micronesia as the world's 10th most obese nation. 22. The Micronesian island of Yap has hundreds of giant disks of rocks dispersed across it. Known as Rai, the stones have been used as a form of currency for centuries, even though many of the stones are too heavy to move. 23. Every year on the island of Yap, the Homecoming Festival, or the Taste of Yap, is celebrated. Activities include a stone money ceremony, canoe building, and traditional dancing, such as the men's standing dance and a stick dance. 24. Micronesia has been hit by a number of severe typhoons over the years. Notable events were Typhoon Chatan in 2002 and Typhoon Sudal in 2004, which destroyed much of the island of Yap's infrastructure. 25. In 2018, a plane sunk in a lagoon after overshooting the runway in Micronesia. Fortunately, all 57 people on board were rescued safely. Top 10. Traditional Micronesian Foods 1. Coconut Chicken Curry It is one of the most popular dishes in Micronesia. This delicious dish features grilled chicken and vegetables in a creamy coconut curry. It is usually prepared with fried chicken nuggets, potatoes, carrots, peppers, onions, ginger and garlic cooked in coconut milk, flavored with curry powder. The onions, ginger, and garlic are usually sautéed before mixing with other ingredients to enhance the flavor of the dish. This dish is usually served with steamed white rice. 2. Chicken Micronesia Micronesian chicken is a local speciality, but is also famous in other parts of the world. 
It consists of grilled chicken breast, marinated in lemon juice, and marinated in a mixture of beer, soy sauce, chopped onion, and garlic for at least three hours. This hearty dish is served during the holidays, but can also be ordered in restaurants. 3. Koakir Koakir is a Micronesian dish consisting of sweet potatoes soaked in coconut milk. This dish is traditionally cooked in an iron pot called oampwot and is prepared with ground yam and yam cubes boiled in coconut milk until soft. This dish is typical of Pohnpei, where yam is one of the main crops. 4. Uter Taro balls are eaten all over Micronesia and have various local names. They are usually made from boiled and grated taro root mixed with grated coconut and are formed into balls of various sizes. Today, this traditional Micronesian dessert is often loaded with sugar and can vary in consistency from soft to firm. 5. Pichlohlo Mueheng Pichlolo Mueheng is a traditional Micronesian dish composed of taro root and coconut water syrup. This dish is made from a mixture of boiled and ground taro root, starch, and sugar. The taro mixture is then formed into ovals and added to a pot of caramelized coconut milk syrup to cover completely. 6. Breadfruit Breadfruit is a staple of Micronesian cuisine. Because of its powdery texture, it is used in a variety of dishes. But there are other ways to enjoy fruit in Micronesia. It can be, for example, steamed, baked, ground, or mashed. Baking in the oven is a popular way to enhance the flavor of the breadfruit. Micronesians also like to use it in salads. Traditional recipes for fruit salad with bread also include meat, beans, cucumbers, onions, tomatoes, and cabbage. 7. UHT Sukusuk This traditional Micronesian dish consists of mashed or mashed plantains mixed with coconut milk. Ut sukusuk, which means mashed plantain, is usually topped with coconut milk and is usually cooked and eaten on palm leaves. Top four languages of Micronesia. 1. Chukizi. Sometimes spelled Trukiz, this is the native language for almost half of the population of Micronesia. It is spoken mostly in the Chuk state, one of the four states of the Federated States of Micronesia. Some speakers can be found in Guam and other island territories nearby. In Micronesia alone, there are an estimated 45,900 speakers. One particular feature of the language is the presence of words that start with double consonants, something that many Micronesian languages used to have as well. 2. Kosrayan Kosrayan is spoken mainly in the state of Kosrae, which is made up of many islands, with about 8,000 speakers in Micronesia, Kosrayan is still better off than many languages, as it is used both in and out of school and in other sectors as well. The language has 11 consonants and 12 vowels, with many different ways to string words together to form the same sentence. Interestingly enough, there are different possessive adjectives used depending on what the noun in question is, like a drink or a shelter. 3. Yapes Predominantly spoken in the state of Yap in Micronesia, Yapes may be part of the Admiralty Islands group of the Austronesian languages. The number of speakers is unknown, but could be around 7,000 or more. An interesting feature of the language is that most words that begin with a vowel also begin with a glottal stop. There are various other places where glottal stops happen as well in words, as this is a distinguishing feature of the language. 4. Pohnpeian Pohnpeian is spoken in the state of Pohnpei by over 30,000 people. This makes it the second most spoken language in Micronesia, after Chukese. It is closely related to Chukese, but is not by any means a dialect of it. Its modern alphabet only uses 20 letters, and the orthography was designed by a German, so it makes for some interesting letter combinations in words. Pohnpeian has a high language, or a version of the language that is only used when speaking about people of a certain rank. This includes different vocabulary as well as different grammar. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the enchanting islands of Micronesia. From the pristine beaches to the vibrant coral reefs, this region offers a unique blend of natural beauty 
and rich cultural heritage. As we conclude our exploration, we hope this video has sparked your curiosity about the wonders that await in Micronesia. Whether you're drawn to the traditional ceremonies, the warm hospitality of the people, or the diverse marine life beneath the crystal clear waters, there's something magical about these remote islands. If you have any questions or would like more information about planning a visit to Micronesia, feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more travel adventures and cultural explorations. As we say goodbye to Micronesia, remember that the world is full of extraordinary places waiting to be discovered. Until next time, happy travels.